We're quite happy. Um, that we have Fechter here from uh, Colbert TV or just Colbert? Colbert. Just Colbert. Mm -hmm. um, and the story is that um, yeah, Colbert is in the database management system, and I'm sure we're going to hear all about it. Um, and I saw this uh, on the internet, and I thought that um, there's not so many people in this country that work on making database management systems. Uh, therefore, we should talk. And uh, usually the academics, the way academics talk to each other, they invite each other for talks, so there you are. All right, okay. all yours. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, first of all, uh, yeah. I'd like it to be here, and uh, I also feel uh, honored to be here with you, because you're all uh, scientists and experts in the field of data architecture, data analysis. And I'd like to be here because I have a small company, and we developed a database management system with some new functionality, which we think is maybe innovative, uh, powerful and simple, but it's nice to hear from you what you think of it. So that's what I like to hear from you. Now, as I said, I might not be a real scientist in the sense that I never did some thorough investigation on what was already published uh, in this field. Neither did I publish myself in a, I didn't write down my research in a neat and scientific notation. What I did though, do is uh, I wrote uh, hundreds of Prototypes. I like uh, prototypes because they give you the ability to play around. And playing around, you sometimes see similarities in your solution where you didn't expect that. And then it gets interesting. What is it that the similarity, what, what does it stand for? Uh, also, when you're uh, playing around with your prototype, uh, you sometimes uh, feel this is getting too complicated. And most of the time when things get complicated, you didn't find, the, in my opinion, the core, the essence of the solution of the problem. So throw it away, uh, as I did in most, except one, all of my prototypes, just throw them away. Rethink it, uh, try a different angle and uh, start again. Um, this photo is also important for me. This is, uh, as you see here, this is Groningen. These are the famous Kolsaatvelden, Rapeseed it's called. This is just five minutes bike away from my home. This is where I live and I like to be here. Uh, this open landscape helps me to, def to develop an open mind, a broad view. And uh, especially when I'm here, I'm, I'm doing nothing, not, not thinking about the research. Uh, sometimes things pop up new insights. Uh, so you could say my development method is something like throw away prototyping by playing around and doing nothing. And it works for me. So um, enough for this philosophical uh, intro, uh, what brought us. As I said, uh, we've got a, a, a relational database management system with some new functionality. Most important is the ability of executing formulas that are stored in database fields. Uh, we've also uh, developed uh, a domain-specific language, we call it Haddock. And uh, with Haddock you can uh, analyze and mutate uh, strings. Uh, we integrated it in SQL. By the way, SQL, you'll see it by the way, uh, we also uh, yeah, change SQL a bit. You can speak normal SQL, but you can also speak a dialect. We, you can omit all superfluous redundant SQL elements like could buy or having, or uh, if you don't need a from or you don't need a select, just omit it, makes life easier. Um, then we also uh, add an easy way to uh, add functions, even generic functions, but that's more a syntactic sugar, not, not really scientific, I guess. Um, we also added uh, the ability to normalize data, to be able to uh, import or uh, access not well-structured data structures as if it were normalized data tables. And we added an, uh, an operator function uh, former, which gives you the ability to access information from the former record. And with that, you can easily uh, implement all those. Some language have those, what do you call it, a window function or analytic functions. Yes. They've got a lot, and the one you need is never there. Uh, mm -hmm. And with this simple uh, form of function, you can implement it too. So uh, let's see where it uh, leads us, because this is a lot. Um, let's start with uh, the uh, ability of 
executing formulas stored in database fields. Now, there was an actually problem with a client of mine. They had a billing problem. Uh, it was a huge company, and the problem had to do with uh, billing, with writing invoices. Uh, the actions they perform, you see in, in, in uh, here the structure of the table. There was a client ID, an action ID, an action date, some other parameters I don't know anything about, and finally a fee. Now billing was done straightforward until a certain moment in time, and it had to do with governmental rules. But the hospital was allowed to charge an additional fee, which you can see here, if a certain condition was met. And there were also hundreds of formulas. So my question to you would be, how would you solve this? Can you solve this in your database? Mm -hmm. uh, would you write a program outside the database? Would you go to a spreadsheet? Um, the so many answers, gentlemen. Come on, this is the invitation. <laughs> For now, it's like a projection, no? I mean, you can, you can express this as a... As one big like this, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this was what the IT department came up with. <laughs> uh, this is what they tried, but remember there are hundreds of formulas, mm -hmm. and there was another problem that these formulas uh, they changed over time uh, on an average of three times a week. So the uh, the the, uh, the financial department had to go to the IT department to update this SQL code. And also there was another problem, they also wanted to be to have the opportunity of uh, what does a, spe a specific group of formulas with a specific task, uh, type tech, uh, contribute to uh, some additional fee. Okay, now uh, I'll show you first how you can solve it in Colbert. I'll show you a quick uh, uh, solution. And after that, I'll go to, into the details and uh, the concept. All right? This is Colbert. I've got my building camera here. Um, and here I have the action ID. I write action, but this is exactly the same as select star from actions. So we omit uh, superfluous things. <coughs> and I also have my table with billing formulas. And here you see the formulas. Now, in Colbert, I can just say actions. What did I say? I don't have it here. Okay, do it by head. <laughs> uh, I can join these two tables. Again, this is same as select staff from action joint billing formulas. Now I got, oh yeah, now I know what's the problem about this resolution because I don't have. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, you still you still see here the formulas, but when you access a formula by name, then it's being calculated. So the solution to our problem is actually give me the client ID, the action ID, and the well, action. I I mean more than six. Client ID, action ID, and the action date, and give me the bonus. Sorry, not the bonus, additional fee. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Additional fee. Um, no, from this join where condition. And executing this actually gives me the result, the wanted result. Not quite, because you see that some formulas uh, of, of some actions uh, have an additional fee due to several uh, formulas. So actually what I have to do is to say, give me the sum of the additional fee. So there you have it. Again, you see, we don't do any crew buy. I never understand why there's a crew buy. Maybe you can explain it to me, but <laughs> I omit it. A question of clarification. Yes. In the previous slide, you identified that there are a number of rules. Yes. What are the logic? What is the semantics of the rules? Is it order dependent? Are they independent? So what determines a correct application of a rule? 
Okay, shall we um, go into that after I okay, explained, uh, just remember the question and uh, we'll come to that later. This was just uh, mm -hmm. some a quick uh, uh, introduction of how you can solve in Colbert. So now let's go to the concept behind it. Uh, all right? Yeah. yeah just, uh, um, sorry for, for interrupting yeah. again, but just for the semantic of this quick. The where condition is synonym for where condition is not now. Sorry again. The where condition. You write where condition yes. in this quick. Is it synonym for where condition is not now? No, it's synonym, synonym for where condition is true. Condition is a formula. Ah, okay, where the variation of the formula is true. Okay, exactly. And this was the table where it comes from. I can, uh, there's a shortcut to open a table or execute a SQL statement uh, which is selected. And here's condition. Mm -hmm. And you see that this condition is uh, a formula that yields a Boolean value. Okay? Now about the concept. Uh, we said if this is going to work, we have to define some objectives before we uh, implement it. And we said uh, we want no extension of SQL. So we don't want uh, the need for defining a large property set on the data tables. You, uh, you They serve as parameters. No, we want an executor or an evaluate operator. We also said it must be intuitive in use, so uh, as if it's always been there. Uh, and we said we want a strong type mechanism for formulas because typing helps us to uh, prevent making errors. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, and last but not least, we said we want it to be orthogonal in use. And orthogonal means everything fits on everything. Okay. I can tell you we didn't meet all our, our objectives, <laughs> but it's good to have them. Um, I'll show you. Now let's show. Let's go into the concept. Um, oops, sorry, this is not what I was. Only this one. Um, Let's take a look at the table. This is an employee table with an uh, employee name, birthday, and employee ID. There's also a department ID, I come later for that. And here you see uh, apparently some employees have negotiated a bonus formula. Now, if you look at it, you see right away a problem about this column because every column has a type. But what's the type of the bonus formula? Normally, when you have an expression uh, or a function or a method, whatever you call it, the type of that function is defined by the type of the parameters and the type of the result. And here you see there are all kinds of parameters. So we've got a problem. There's one thing you can say about this, and that's that uh, it, make, it does make sense to define the result type. And that's what we did. We introduced a new type, uh, and I've got a table with, let's open a new tab. I can show you the field types. This is an internal failure, and here you see the normal types. The day, day, time, double, double is a real interesting. And every type also has a expression bool, expression double, etc. Mm -hmm. And with this one, we uh, this is a new type. So there goes our objective of not extending SQL. It's, this is the only extension we made. Um, we introduce new types. So if I want to define a table like this, I can do it like uh, create table. Let's call an employee uh, name, which is a string. In addition, age. Uh, no, let's add a salary. Is it the other way around? H that is an int? Or so does it work like this as well? Double. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Well, that, that's the nicest thing about having uh, an, um, a relational da a database management system which you build yourself because you can deal with your own shortcomings. <laughs> <laughs> I could never remember uh, which came which first. Or <laughs> or <laughs> I knew it more. That's good. <laughs> And then we got the bonus, and this bonus, we say, well, what's the type of the bonus? The bonus is expression, oops, uh, let's make it a double. So if I commit this one, it says employee successfully created. I can open it now by this shortcut, 
And now let's add a record. Say John 23. And now add the bonus. Well, if I add this one, will this commit? No. You can't bind these things, right? Okay, <laughs> let's try it. Uh, it will commit. Why? Well, the uh, the compiler tries to compile it, and though it doesn't know anything about the parameters, it says, okay, it might yield, depending on the uh, parameters, it might yield double. Now, let's try another one. Let's say Anna. She's not learning that much. And I say X or I. No. Will this commit? No. This won't commit because there will never. This will never yield a proper double. So type checking is done twofold, and on entering a formula, it's only checked: is there a possibility that it might yield a proper value? I can give it a constant integer. And this is uh, because the integer uh, there's an implicit cost to a double. So the, these formulas they can also refer to columns that are not in the table because they might be joined together with the table later on, for example. Sorry, I can't. Well, what you say? So now this x or y, yeah. it's not in this table. Yes. However, you can still put them in the formulas because you might join this mplo table with another table. And that might have X or Y columns, exactly. right? That's the idea. And then, at that moment, and we'll see you later on, at that moment, the second part of the type checking is done. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. But it's right to tables and both have the X or Y. Yes. <laughs> you want the type resolution done. Point of answer. If we try to enter tables and yes. both have the X record, uh, you have to do some type resolution there. But you have to make sure that on that. Okay, well, well, come to it later too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Remember your question. It's a good question. We'll come to that. Okay, let's uh, get rid of this and this one too. And here we have our M table. Now, there's an odd thing about uh, this, this column, this formula, because a formula actually has two manifestations. And sometimes we mean the code, and sometimes we mean the value. Actually, it's not that strange because you're all familiar with it. I mean, if you have a variable, if you say that variable will be 10, then you mean the placeholder for the variable for the value. And if you say uh, variable plus 10, then you mean the reference of the variable. So this is something similar. It's not that strange. Um, and like you're used to that, uh, we said, OK, if you call a formula field by its name, then we mean the executed value. So if I say star from, this is the same as select star from, select is just an identity operator uh, with a relation as an input and an output is the same relation. Uh, but now let's add the bonus. So at this moment, bonus is asked to calculate it. And then you see a lot of trouble. Um, this one you can calculate, but here I cut a param error, meaning there is no revenue, there is no target. But the bonus uh, formulas are calculated in this place. This is the place of invocation, and from this place, this is the scope of the variables. Now I can add a, this is normal SQL, I can make it like this, make it more, uh, well, maybe easier. Um, I can just like step say this, so I add a constant field, but I can also say, oh, I name it revenue. So when bonus is calculated now, the concept of the, the scope of parameters, which is, oh, <laughs> this, <laughs> sorry, this is the scope of the parameters. If I execute this one, you see that some other, film, some other formats can be executed. And if I add again, this is not useful, huh? but it's, it's explanatory. I, I guess it's not useful. And if I say, okay, oops, I need a comma. Uh, then I can almost evaluate all bonuses. Now let's make a, this a Boolean value. 
if I execute this, then you can see there are other there are parameter errors and there are syntax type errors. The these types is something like nil. You can ask for where down is this error or where down is this if I want to know which parameters are missing. Like this. Now, as I said, this is not very useful. Uh, let's go to the end table again. Uh, how do I use it? Well, imagine I have some sales figures like this table. There's the same employee ID, and per year there's a revenue uh, and a target. And now I can easily say, okay, I call my employee, uh, join it with my sales. I make it a natural auto join. Again, I think this is superfluous. So this might be omitted too. Um, oh, we already did. No, and now I say select star uh, and give me the bonus value. And we almost see. And now you see here the calculated bonuses. Now a fun thing in Colbert is that I can order by, but I, but I also can uh, add an order here and add a where class like this. So it's ascending and selected. So it must be orthogonal. Everything fits on everything. Okay. Um, now let's go back to our objectives. Uh, we didn't match them all. We uh, extended SQL with an expression T. Uh, I think it's still intuitive in use. Uh, and the type mechanism is done twofold. First on entering, uh, and it's quite orthogonal. So the concept is we introduce an extra, extra T, twofold type mechanism. The formula name denotes its value and the scope of the parameters is defined by the place of implementation. Yeah? Are there still other questions about this, uh, this part so far? Is your question answered? Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, I didn't show it, but the two, the, the two tables with the same type of. So that oh, that was, yeah, yeah, I forgot your question. Uh, if you have two tables with two same X parameters. And we should be able to narrow say it's ambiguous. Or? Okay, well, normally uh, if you have a table A and B and they both have an X, if you say select whatever star from uh, table A, table B, of course you can enter an alias. If you don't have an alias, uh, search of parameters is going from left to right, so it's the first X from the first table, which is uh, taken in that situation. Okay. I have a yeah. quick question. You uh, selected a constant in the WHERE clause yeah. uh, with a name, and the name is normally the relation name, right? But you use it as a, as a field name. How does that work? <laughs> well, you can. Um, you mean the in your in your first in your example where you had the constants in the uh, oh yeah okay uh, this was the empty. yeah there yeah the target True. target is now twenty thousand yes but target in that case actually in, in that place actually means a table name so you're resolving that somehow right no no target is just in the, it's just it's a field field. It's, a color. it's a constant field. Oh, it's in the front. Sorry, oh, yeah. so it's, it's, it's in front it's of it's the web. Sorry, it's 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 sorry. I thought yeah. it was after it. In this yeah. Yeah. My, my mistake. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's go on to uh, our next topic, and that's Haddock. Um, <laughs> if you have one more question, please uh, feel free to answer. Um, Haddock is uh, our uh, domain-specific language. It's 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 fun to use. Um, Haddock uh, makes a string uh, a seven tuple, so it's a, some kind of final state automate. Um, if you use the double column operator, it makes a st from a string it makes this seven tuple, the original source, which is a string. There's also a Boolean success. There's the length of the string, the position, the current position of the string. There's a buffer in it. Uh, from, from into which you can copy uh, elements from the string. There's a counter and a repeat counter. 
and that consists of a lot of one level operation all heavily overloaded. So let's go to uh, the demo. Here I have a the quantity. I'll do this one. Here I've got a table with all commands. So and the commands, as I said, one letter commands, uh, and they you, they uh, repeat parameters. So I can erase a character, three characters. Minus four means uh, at least four or more, and no or a star means uh, as many as you can. Uh, you've got erase, back erase, write. There's also some write with a string, which means go write if the next character is in this string or in this range, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Verify, find, substitute. Um, well, I don't expect you to understand them all right away, remember them all right away. Um, you also got, uh, you can move things around in these registers, in these tuple elements. You can quit the ad hoc, and when quitting, you can decide if you want to deliver yield, uh, the counter, the position, etc., etc. There's also some you can group uh, commands, then they are one atomic command, and they will uh, yield success or fail as a whole. Oh, yeah, that's important too. Uh, every command uh, also, um, uh, well, every command in one way or the other way manipulate those tuple elements. Mm -hmm. But if the success permit, per, sorry, if the success element is wrong, then the next commands are not executed. This, um, this is a group. You can also uh, define a lot of groups. This is some kind of if then else. If this is successful, then it stays with this. Otherwise, the next will be executed, etc., etc. Now, let's see how we can we use it. Oh yeah, this is um, we use had especially uh, in, in uh, importing. Uh, uh, data in not so well structured uh, files, even text files. Uh, we also have the ability to do this in Colbert. Uh, Dayak uh, is just um, uh, a text file and uh, name of the text file followed by text uh, opens the text file as a relation of lines. And that's what we're using here. This is a real life problem. We, we had a file like this and it had started with the name, then always with some PBS code, with some additional things belonging to this PBS code, another PBS code. And here you see PBS123 with one, two, three other uh, subcodes. And this had to be normalized <coughs> and uh, accessed. Normalized, I'll we'll comment later on that, but now I'll show you, uh, how you what you can do with Haddock. <coughs> um, here we ask for the line, and then line, make it a Haddock, find the first space, erase as many as you can, call it a name, so you get the name from it. Uh, or you can say, next one, uh, imagine I wanted from every line the second number. So here's the line, make it a haddock, go to the first character in this range, uh, move, uh, if a character is in this range, move it to the buffer, do it as many times as you can, and this group, do it twice, and exit with the buffer. So here's every time the, uh, here in this last column, you can see the second number if it's available. Now, the fun thing is that all these uh, parameters that you see here, uh, that might be any parameter you like. Now, we have in Colbert also a virtual table called uh, sequence, sequence three or sequence one till three. It's a virtual table with a line of numbers. Normally, it's ID, but I can also add the name of this column. So, I can this. Example, I join it with uh, so bit, with sequence x one till four, and then as I've now got an x parameter, I can do it like this. So it's a join from this direct text with the sequence one two. I can add x two. 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then I got first, second, third, etc., etc. Um, and of course, I can make it a few or whatever I like. Um, a last one. Uh, this is uh, something thing uh, as a header is uh, a tuple. Uh, but depending on the context, it can also yield a boolean. And behind the where class, there's a boolean wanted. So then there's an implicit class to a boolean. This is a headlock, and well, it's like uh, it's eating the first and the last character if it's the same, uh, and do it as many times as you can. So if the length is less than two, then it's a palindrome. So here I ask for all the uh, elements in this table with the name is a palindrome, like Anna and Otto. Mm -hmm. I think this is something you stumbled up quite a lot, so here's you. <laughs> um, as you can see this, uh, maybe you know why this language is called Haddock. Do you know uh, Tintin, Kuifje? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It looks like a curse. Yes, it looks like a <laughs> Captain Haddock is a curse a lot in. <laughs> okay, so much for Haddock. Uh, as I said, we it's nicely it's nice to use it in conjunction with a uh, normalize function we added. Uh, normalize uh, with normalize you can uh, repeat its structures in text. Sorry, normalize normalizes repeat structures. Normalize. We have a table called normalize and it's a virtual table and it gets its data from some expression uh, so you can say normalize expression and then it normalizes default by a space in the text this must be a, a string expression you can also say normalize this expression by a certain delimiter or from or you can also normalize a lot of fields now how does this work Let's go to a normal demo of Tintin. If I have a table like this, you see here a string field with um, yeah, some sports separated by a comma. If I say sports join normalized sport, normalized sport is a virtual table which has an expression sport, which is this field, and it normalizes based on the comma. Let's go back to our direct text. Um, I say normalize this line from PVS, meaning every PVS is a starting point for a, a subline. And this subline you see here, I normalize that again based on the space. So here I get all those sub items. This is not quite what I want because um, I want it really normalized, so I add some extra information. This is the same situation, but now I say, okay, give me the line, and here we see find PVS, uh, erase the rest with the name, get the subline, do something with it, that's my PVS code, etc., etc. So this is the normalized view, actually consisting of three tables, a join on three tables. Uh, taken from this direct text, you can add for clarity the line again. So here you see this line is uh, decomposed in Hank with this and etc. etc. You see also see here missing. A missing is a nil, a special kind of nil. It's a nil caused by an outer join. It's still nil, you can you, you can ask for it's nil and you'll know also this value. Well, this is just um, uh, a normal SQL statement. So you can make it a few and uh, ask for things like uh, where, how is it called? So, various uh, likes can take. Etc. Okay, this is about Haddock. Okay, I've got some time, so let's go to another one. Um, function declaration. Uh, I go to former. We defined. Where's my former demo? Uh, we 
we defined a former expression and uh, former expression this expression is taken from the previous records and if it's the first record then this will yield nil I can also ask for a former without a parameter or a const parameter and then we mean the former failure of my field now what can I do with this um, I have that I have that sales figures, so I can uh, make a list of revenue values, and now I can ask for keeping the revenue and the revenue minus the former revenue. So this is thousand minus thousand, uh, eleven thousand minus thousand. So former minus former, I call it revenue grow. I can also do something like uh, the revenue plus the former revenue, plus the former from the former of the revenue, divided by three. So this is some running average. Um, I can also oh, sorry, do something like, and here you see the other uh, manifestation of former. This is mean. So the cumulative revenue is a cumulative sum of revenue plus my former. Mm -hmm. And former, I can also add, uh, Starting with thousand dot zero, etc., etc. Um, so former is a very simple building blocks which which you can uh, define uh, any uh, uh, what we call analytic functions like this one. And here, here are my sales figures, and if I want to see the grow in the revenue, uh, I must start again if there's a new employee because I want to see the <coughs> grow in the revenue per employee. So I say if employee is the same as the former employee, then revenue in former revenue, otherwise nil. So I have the revenue growth per employee. And here you have the buy the, the, the sales by uh, employee ID and year that gives the sorting order where former. Yes. Is, so. And I might not omit it. If I do this, then I say former function needs an order by okay. because mm -hmm. former only makes sense if there's an order. Mm -hmm. And now my favorite. <laughs> it's very simple building blocks, former and the former of former. And if they yield nil, then one. And this is Fibonacci from the sequence. And I like this because um, this is what I said in the beginning. If you have, uh, you play around and, some, uh, and you cut to the essence of a problem, and you, might, you, you have this very small building blocks. And then I say, let's try this one. And you see uh, yeah, that magic, that's fun. Mm -hmm. so, um, actually, I'm done, but I, I can go if you would like uh, just quickly go back to function decoration. Um, the, our parser, uh, I, I think the heart of our program is our parser. We've got a very strong parser, and we there's also developing the parser. We saw you've got functions, you've got operators. And then you see it. it's quite similar. What's the difference? So we just a function is just an operator uh, with special uh, priority acting on a tuple. Uh, but what's a tuple? There's a opening parentheses and a closing parentheses. Can we make those opening and closing parentheses uh, actors too? And the comma in between. So we only have got actors and denotations in our parser. And I'll parse because we also have to um, parse formulas. Is some kind of probability parser. It, uh, without knowing the identifiers, it looks it, it it looks for any possible outcome of the parsing. So when defining functions, we uh, I when I have a. a, a on the databases, when I have to define function, I always have to look up how, 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 how do you do that. It's a very specific uh, uh, syntax. Um, so I wanted to make a very simple uh, implementation like this, create a name and then an expression, and just an expression as you normally use uh, for calculated fields or whatever. And when I was building this, I said, okay, you know, I have to also to, I have to define the parameter types. Uh, but then I thought, well, why should I do it? It's turned out that I got my generic uh, definitions for free because the compiler already did that. So 
let's go back to Colbert and to open the function demo. Uh, this is the last one. <laughs> Have I got uh, a, here's my, a table from? Uh, I can say overwrite or create my function next as x plus one. Again, we don't know anything about x at this moment. And you see, he says, uh, generic function next successfully created three times. So I can use next here, next ID, next birthday, next salary. This is an int, this is a birthday, uh, sorry, yeah, it's a birthday. The date, and this is a salary. And here you see the next functions. Now, you remember this one, the uh, uh, function where we had get uh, a number from a text from a string. I can also say override function get number as line here. here, here. Um, the compiler tries to compile this and he knows well, okay, line, I don't know anything about that. These are recognized, and here's an x I don't know anything about. So line and x must be parameters. And you can see this is a uh, strange example. He uh, generates uh, 15 uh, implementations of this. And I can use it like this uh, from the sequence table again, get line number. I can also say, uh, give me the dial text where, this is where, where get number line four. So give me the lines where there uh, are four uh, numbers in it. Is that more? Of course, I can add if I want uh, the typing. I can overload it. Uh, I can do the library. Um, I think this is it. I remember I forgot. Yeah, it's it's fun. Um, I've got some examples of how you can use uh, formulas again. Um, imagine I have bias. Let me go back to the formulas thing. One more minute. Imagine I've got buyers. Buyers are looking for second-hand cars, and I also have a table with cars. So how do I match these one? Well, I just say buyer out of cars on find. Um, imagine I've got a table, a huge population, uh, which I want to investigate. Uh, maybe some uh, statistical analysis. Uh, I want to divide this population in cohorts. Uh, um, sometimes I do it based on a field value, but sometimes I want to do it more specific, like this. If um, if my uh, element from my uh, population applies to this formula, then it belongs to this cohort. Well, you know, in, in terms, I can do from out of from cohort from death. Um, now you see that some uh, elements of my uh, population uh, belong to uh, multiple cohorts. If that's what you want, it's fine. But in Colbert, you can also say, give me the first. And then again, first only makes sense if there's an order by rank. Uh, on def. So now everyone just belongs to one cohort. And you can see that some people do not belong to any cohort. Well, that's not a problem because um, I can add an extra. Oh, I can add an extra uh, cohort with a very high rank, call it miscellaneous, and the formula is true. Now if I go back here, and then you see that everyone belongs to one cohort. So, thank you for listening. Uh, nice to be uh, here with you and to present to you. And I would really like to hear from you what you think of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Comments, questions? I have a question about the functions. Um, the way I understand it, you create basically all the possible functions uh, for all the possible types the variables can take, right? Yes. 
So if I do say a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus a5, you get kind of a combinatorial explosion, no? Exactly. So what I would, uh, if I look at this, the way I would implement this is to actually not create anything at all at function creation time, but rather do the binding when you use the function in a query. Yeah. Because at that point, you know all the types. Exactly. And then you don't have to deal with this combinatorial explosion of the input parameters. Yeah. Because otherwise, I assume your program crashes if I use like 10 different columns in the fu function, yeah. right? No, I've looked at it, I, I totally agree with you. <laughs> On the other hand, um, um, if I do uh, A, A plus A2 plus A3 plus A3, mm -hmm. plus A3 of course, the plus operator, mm -hmm. well, we can try it. Uh, let's do it afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please, please. Um, <laughs> um, when there's a plus operator, mm -hmm. um, the function only gets the double part because there's an mm -hmm. implicit uh, class from integers to doubles. Mm -hmm. And then plus only applies to a daytime plus an integer. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, and then you can add other integers. Mm -hmm. But I think if you do uh, a plus a three plus a three plus a three, it will bind first to an integer. I think you got maybe uh, mm -hmm. if you've got five parameters, it was, I think you get maybe 10 or 15. Uh, okay. Uh, no, 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 it's true. You can use the cast and then everything yeah. can go in, right? I mean, if you use, if you can use an operator that can take any type and then you're, or there is an operator, for example, you know, that can take any type. No, there's not. No, no, yeah, I mean, a lot of operators are overloaded. Plus yeah. is overloaded yeah. for daytime, for integer, yeah. for boolean, mm -hmm. but uh, sorry, for, no, not for boolean, for integer, for a double. Mm -hmm. But as there's an implicit cast from integer to double, mm -hmm. it, it uh, only uh, takes the double right. Right, version. I, I would like to play with this a bit. But I, <laughs> but I, think, I think that uh, this can be solved by basically deferring this until you actually use the function. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. my, yeah. would be my intuition. I think it's more a need to do it that way, but. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of things I like to do. Oh, no, of course, of course. Of, yeah. of course. Yeah. Okay, another question. Can you do subqueries? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, I will test that as well. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay let's, uh, let's yeah. have Mark some playtime yeah. later. Um, <laughs> other questions now? Yes, uh, so, so in, in the same context, but then for your um, formulas, uh, your, um, the formulas in your fields in your tables. Um, so you mentioned this two-step uh, type checking, the sanity check once possible in the beginning and the actual type checking uh, once you um, know the binding. Um, so when is the function, how is it instantiated, how is the code generated, how is it evaluated? Okay. Uh, so yeah. do you kind of materialize this into whatever execution engine you have? Do you interpret that on the fly, the entire expression? Yeah, when you execute a query bridge uh, and, and where you ask for the value of a formula field, then the first time the uh, formula is uh, uh, accessed, at that time uh, the binding is done. Uh, and the binding is not done by some, uh, it's, it's not a parameter list, of course, with, with actual, with formal parameters and actual parameters. The binding is done on, on name base. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's uh, compiled and binded once and stored in a cache. So if the formula is afterwards again evaluated, um, it, it's just already bind to a special fields where it, it gets its value from. So um, compiled as in bytecode? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. compiled in, yeah. So, with languages go bare implemented so? C sharp. C sharp. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other questions? Uh, do support any transaction management like start? Sorry. Yeah. Trans transaction management like start transaction commit. Because you saw in Yeah, yeah. No, very low, very low. And there's some commit uh, as you saw I did, but uh, there's no there are no real transactions in it. Oh, you can't do multiple updates and then commit this set of no, it's not there. Okay. It's a lack of the code. But you can do one insert at a time. Can you can do one insert at a time. I can do one insert at a time, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you have any sort of compression for the, the representation or sorry my hearing? How, how is the, the, the storage of uh, your data? The storage. Is it, is it compressive? 
Uh, no, I got multiple. Uh, you can create multiple types of tables, uh, but basically these tables are just uh, they're stored as strings. But you can also uh, store them as uh, their internal representation. So I got multiple types of tables uh, where you can store them. And what, so what is the internal representation? Is it row-wise binary blob kind of or? So, um, yeah, it's kind of blob with uh, with a fixed length. Uh, if you were store it as a binary, uh, then the strings all have a fixed length, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's it's one big blob. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, uh, and, and there's also a way of storing it as a, a, a text file. Mm -hmm. so, I assume it's also not really made to handle like very big files. No. It's more like an Excel sort of data esque. Right, like well, Excel sort this. Of uh, okay, okay, maybe a bit bigger than Excel, like a hundred thousand rows or something. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's not meant to be like no, it's not meant to be, no. Yeah. And and for, uh, by example, the the first example from the hospital, uh, they mm -hmm. had hundreds of thousands of actions each day, five hundred thousand, and then and about hundred formulas. And if you evaluate that, it's it, it took about four minutes on on a regular desktop okay. to, uh, to to to. So it's it's not built for uh, for, for really for big data yeah, analysis sure, or something sure. like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't go into uh, optimizing. Uh, no, like yeah, yeah, true, true. So it's, it's it's what we like here to optimize. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, but uh, of course it's a different use case and such. Yeah. So. Yeah. My questions. Yeah, more like a curiosity. Is that meant to be used with that particular interface, or you can use it with to use with what with what interface? With the one that we you showed us, or is like with this interface? Yeah. Oh, oh um, yeah. At the moment, you should use it like this interface. We're build. We're busy building uh, Ado.net. That's a C sharp version, so that you can access all the tables from all the database. And we also want to present it uh, by .net or uh, any other protocol outside. But at the moment, it's not in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for now? Ben will also be here for a couple of uh, a bit more time. So, oh, yeah. so if you, anybody wants to uh, have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session, then uh, please let me know. But otherwise, uh, I would say let's uh, thank you again. And, yeah. uh, thank you.